Hello, everybody. This is Eric Sullivan. We're going to be looking at NumPy to do linear algebra today. So this is going to be a couple of videos. Um, and I mentioned how to work with matrices in one of my other NumPy videos. But in this particular one, we're actually going to dive a little bit deeper. And I'm going to presume that you've seen a little bit of linear algebra from maybe a linear algebra course. So let's get going. <clears throat> Obviously, the base unit of currency in linear algebra are matrices and vectors. So let's figure out how to build matrices and vectors. I'm going to import NumPy just as I always would, NP as the prefix. And to build a matrix, I'm going to say NP.matrix. <clears throat> NP is the prefix for NumPy. And I'm just saying, hey, this is a NumPy matrix. Now just The only thing to remember is that a matrix is a list of lists. Every row is itself a list. So I've got a list to start the entire matrix. <clears throat> now I've got a list for the first row, one, two, three. End that one, comma. Now I start a list for the next one, four, five, six. <clears throat> End that one, comma. And it was seven, eight, zero. And I end all the lists and I can run it. And if I print this guy off, I can actually see that I get the right matrix. I can do things like a dot shape, and it'll tell me that's a three by three matrix. I can do things like a dot size, and it'll tell me that there's nine entries in that matrix. So similarly, I can define B as NP dot matrix of, if I spelled it correctly, there we go. Let's see here. So that is two minus one, 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 two, three minus two, one. And you notice, by the way, that the help kind of gets in the way sometimes. I'm just hitting escape to make it go away. Um, U is a vector. So there's two ways that you can build vectors in kind of a, a nice, convenient way. So I'm going to do NP dot matrix. I'm just going to treat this thing as a three by one matrix. So the first list just has a three in it. The next list just has a four in it. The next list just has a negative one in it. So notice that actually builds the matrix or builds the vector exactly as we would expect. Whereas you could do NP dot matrix of, and now I could take this as a single list, zero, negative five, two, right? Now, if I print that thing, it's a row vector. And if I do dot T, take the transpose of it and I get the vector that I wanted. So sometimes I will define my column vectors this way with the transpose on the end. Sometimes I'll just do it as lists of lists. It doesn't really matter which one you do. Okay, and of course you can also do V dot shape. It'll tell you that it's three by one. V dot size, it'll tell you that there's three things in there. So size and shape will be able to give you um, a little bit of basic information about the matrices that you have. Okay, so let's do some basic operations on these things. So matrix addition and subtraction. So I can do A plus B, and so long as the sizes actually match, everything's gonna work just fine, right? And it actually, here, one thing I like to do is kick that to a new line, just so I don't have to, it doesn't wrap the thing in a weird way. So A plus B is, three, one, four, if you look across the first row here, if I line these up, I get a three, I get a one, I get a four, the rest of them are gonna do the same. Okay, so matrix addition is really easy. Matrix subtraction, same idea. The backslash N is just, give me a new line so I can subtract. It'll give me an error if I try and do something that has the wrong sizes. Ooh, or it won't. Okay, you would think it would give you an error, but it will actually not give you an error. So I did A minus U and I got this crazy thing. Oh, what the heck is it doing? A minus U, A, here, let's, let's see if we can get everything in one place. So I'm gonna print A, I'm gonna print U, and then I'm gonna print A minus U. Okay, so there's A, there's U, and what did it do? So if I take the first column of A, Oh, there it is, first column of A and subtract U. So one minus three is negative two, four minus four is zero, seven minus negative one 
Well, that doesn't give me, no, that does give me eight. Okay, so it looks like it took column minus column. And then if I take this column minus that column, I actually get the same thing. So it actually did column minus column for all of these, which is not even remotely what it should have done. So this should have given me an error by, for all practical purposes, but it doesn't. So you have to be a little bit warned here about what's actually going to happen. Okay, let's look at a few other operations. Let's do things like um, matrix multiplication, scalar multiplication, all of that good stuff. So I'm going to introduce a new cell. So if I just did A times B, right, it'll actually do the matrix multiplication the way you expect it. Oh, geez, equals. There we go. Okay, so it actually does row by column matrix multiplication the way you expect it to do. If you wanted to do element by element multiplication, I think, I'm doing this off the top of my head, I don't remember. I think it's NP dot multiply A and B. Right, that should give me an element by element multiplication where I just line them up and multiply them one at a time. Let's just check. The first entry should be a two, <clears throat> and that is one times two. Next entry should be a negative two if I'm doing element by element multiplication, and sure enough, it is. Okay. <coughs> Scalar multiplication is relatively simple. So if I did something like 2a, Right, I'm just getting every two times everything in A. So that, that all works out perfectly fine. Okay, transpose and determinant. So let's go to another code cell here. The transpose is relatively easy. You can just do A dot T and it'll do the transpose for you. I'm actually gonna do the inverse next. That's a dot i, right? And so, and if, and if it was matrix B, it would be B dot i. And actually, B is a singular matrix. It does not have, oops, see, it even says singular matrix. Um, it does not have an inverse. Now, if you want to do the determinant, let's say the determinant of A. Now, what I'm going to do is np dot linalg dot and there's all sorts of things in the linear algebra package. And you'll notice that determinant is right in the top because alphabetically it should be, right? And I can do the determinant. Well, I know B is singular, so I should get zero out of that. All right, so transpose, inverse, and determinant are actually pretty straightforward to do. And what else did I have on this list? So you got dot product and vector norm. And then I'm probably gonna cut this video off and we'll do the rest in the next video. Okay, so dot product. If I've got the vectors u and v, okay, so I should be able to do np dot dot of u and v. Ooh, it does not like that. Okay, so that's a problem, right? So because it's three by one and three by one, okay, it doesn't actually like this. So if I do dot transpose on one of them, Ooh, that doesn't seem sensible in the least. And I've got my colon in the wrong place. Okay, that's not a dot product. If I do dot transpose on the other, it actually gives me a number. It actually gives me a one by one matrix. So that's a little bit strange. Let's think about this a little bit. Let's print off U, then I'm gonna print off V, All right? So uh, I wanna comment that out. I don't need that anymore. Okay, so these are both column vectors. So if I wanted the dot product, I could do, let's see, row by column, I could do print u dot transpose times v. And it actually does it for me. u dot transpose just takes that first one, turns it into a row vector, right? So if I do print u dot transpose and print v, now I've got this row times this column, which is really saying three times zero plus four times negative five plus negative one times two. Add them all up is what we get. 
Okay, so the dot product actually comes relatively easy. It's a little bit of a pain because you got to remember a transpose. And the last thing, I believe I had the vector norm on there, the magnitude. So scrolling back, last but not least, if I do np.norm or np.linelg, I'm sorry, dot norm of u, I get it. Okay, so not a problem. So I'm going to stop this video there, and we're going to do row reduction, linear systems, other sorts of things in the next video.